Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. This is episode 47. Um, I literally just walked in the door. It is 11.24 p.m. I got one eye open, one eye shut. (laughs) Uh, It was one hell of a a freaking trip. Uh, We've been off the road for a few months over the holidays. Um, So we just got back on the road. And of course, the first show was Fresno, California. Two things about, about it. Number one, uh, first of all, I'm not dogging it. I love Fresno. I love the fans. The house is always packed. I know people from all over the, those areas. Uh, so I, I really enjoy being over there. I like. I love going out. I just kind of wish I could, you know, they could beat me up or something because that trip is a killer. And a couple reasons. Number one, it's California. So it's far. No matter what, we're always going to look at about a six-hour flight. Okay? Number two is from Charlotte to Fresno, there's no direct flights. So we have to connect in Dallas. And uh, that is, um, that's a lot. That that really puts you through it. Not only that, it's not like you are, you know, connecting right up, a, you know, a couple of uh, gates away. It's usually a different terminal. So... You might fly into Terminal A in Dallas. You got 30 minutes to get to Terminal C. So you have to walk down to the middle of the terminal, go take the Skylink, take that. Hopefully that moves fast enough. And then you have to hope when you get off the Skylink that your gate is right there. If not, it's going to be, you know, you're going to have a bit of a a, a, a journey. And I hate running through airports. I can't stand it. I always try to make sure we're way ahead of time. Like when I schedule my schedules, like to for travel, I, I write everything down. And so let's say I'll give you an example. If I have a 12 o'clock, let's say like today, <coughs> flight was at noon, um, leaving Fresno at, at noon, right? So I set the alarm, even though I get up before that, I set the alarm to get up at nine, right? So this is how I look at it. Get up at nine, it gives us an hour to get ready be downstairs, catch the shuttle by 10. Now, the, sh- the airport's only five minutes away, but that's fine. Now we get in and we have plenty of time because I have to be at the gate at least by 11. But I'm giving myself more than enough time to be at the gate, you know, because I'm leaving at, at um, I'm catching a shuttle at 10. By the time we get to the airport and then go, we, we're usually good. We're usually good. Um, so we get there by 11, by 11.30 we start boarding. So we got in actually a little earlier, so we went to go you know, grab a bite. Everybody was having, we got there, we met up with, um, actually we went to the airport. Who did we go to the airport? We were with Trinia. So we went to the airport with Trinia and, and her DJ Ace and um, her dancer. And, um, and then uh, we got through, we said once we get through, we all say goodbye. Okay, see you, man, I see you. And then next thing you know, we all meet up at the restaurant. <laughs> we're like, hey, what, you, what are you doing here? And then Lisa, Lisa, her crew, uh, they were there. They were eating also. And then uh, Lanier's people, they came by. The dancers were there. Um, so everybody was eating. We were kind of just chilling. Everybody's in their own table. But uh, uh, it was cool. And then, um, and then again, we say goodbye to everybody after we ate. Everybody ate breakfast. We figured out we'll wait 10 minutes away for lunch so we can get a burger instead of having some eggs. I'd really rather not eat eggs and then get on a plane. That doesn't agree with me. I have the worst stomach on earth, man. So, but I've learned how to, uh, I pretty much learned how to. Uh... So we just, you know, we said once again, we got up, finished eating, said goodbye to everybody. Okay, guys, have a safe trip. Da, 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 da. 
get to our gate. Next thing you know, Lisa, Lisa, her crew's at our gate. So we're all, she was like, but Trinia went elsewhere because she lives in California. So she takes a whole totally different uh, route. Uh, we're heading towards the East Coast. So is Lisa. Uh, so we ended up on the same plane until we got to uh, Dallas. And on that connection, then everybody dispersed at that point. Um, and really nobody's coming to Charlotte. <laughs> So it's usually just me and Angel on that plane. Um, so it was getting a little heavy on the legs, though, man. You know, it's that's the only thing with the flights, man. They start to start. And you got to be careful, man, on the legs. Like, I haven't read into it, but I've heard people collapsing. Uh, I've heard um, the arteries under your, like, your legs get um, get clogged. Um, that's why they, they kind of advise people to stand up and walk around a little bit and stretch the legs and try... Man, I can't be doing that. Let me let me be straight up, man, with everybody, man. I gained a hell of a lot of weight, for real. I try. I, I, I'm I'm not I'm not proud of it at all. I've spoken to you guys about this before. It's you know it's not really the food because again, if you follow me, you'll realize it's not the food. I, I don't eat fried stuff. I don't sit around eating donuts. Today I did hit a little bit of that. Uh, uh, Valentine's candy because it was Valentine's that I had to leave. I didn't want to bring my candy with me, so of course I stopped picking on. So I had a couple pieces, but other than that, I really don't eat that much crap. I like that. I like food, um, and I don't. Eat, I try not to eat a lot of that stuff. I really. I'm, I think I'm. I think I'm okay. So I know for sure that my uh, weight gain has to do with no moving. Okay, uh, but I'm gonna tell you what's really, really bad. I'll tell you what's the bad thing, and I don't know if any of you guys can relate. Okay. For the last couple of years, I've had to use an extension. Now, anybody who travel who travels on a regular, probably not. If you're not if you're not having a weight issue, you probably don't even know. But they have these. Actually, you know, when you're sitting on a plane, and the flight attendants go through like the security thing, and they show you how to um, to lock a seatbelt in, and they'll hold it up, and they'll lock it, and they'll show you how to do it. Well, that's actually an extension. They actually give that to you so that way you can extend your seatbelt, okay? My seatbelt gets very tight, and if you're doing six hours, it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to hurt after a while, and it's going to leave a mark. So, And it's embarrassing. It's funny because I was telling Angel, I'm like, yo, <laughs> they pass, they, I swear, they pass the seatbelt, the extension. They wrap it up, they roll it up, and they put it like in the palm of their hand. And they pass it like they passing drugs to you. And it's like, yo, like they shaking hands, remember? They shake hands, and when they shake your hand, they're going to release the extension, put it into your hand. You say, okay. And when nobody's looking, you sit there and you connect it, you know? And um, in the beginning, man, when I first have it, had to start using that, I was embarrassed as hell, man. Like, I still am. Don't get me wrong. I'm just realizing that, hey... Shame on me, man. I sh you know, that's my fault. I belong. I should be embarrassed. Yeah. But um, so I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't say anything. Um, and I remember when it first started getting rough because, you know, I would sit there and I, I would see that I'm only like an inch away. But I would have to take a deep breath and just with all my might pop. And then just like, ah. <laughs> so I did that for a while. And I should have known at that point that shit was getting critical. But then, this is so crazy. <clears throat> Once in a while, I get on a plane, and I put the seatbelt, it just fits. Click, and there's a little, little leeway in it. So, mentally, I'm bugging. I, I don't, I, I should have, I don't think I think that I actually lost weight. You know? But it, it's kind of, it kind of feels good to be able to put the seatbelt and kind of sit back and be like, okay. Um, but no, some seats actually, I forgot where they are. There's somewhere on the plane that the seat belts are a little bigger. I don't know. I have never tra track tracked that, but I heard about this. I don't pay it much mind. I kind of get in my seat. You know, I'm not trying to compromise. I could do who can't wear jeans and all he wears is stretch pants. You know, you start doing shit like that, man. It's, it's crazy. But, you know, um, I remember when I first started to have an issue when I first started to have an issue, um, I would actually, sometimes I wouldn't even put the seatbelt on. I would I would basically like tuck it like under the under the belly and shit, you know, make it look tight. And so when they came by to check, they'll look and they'll be like, okay, you got, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got, I got my seatbelt on. No, I didn't have it. And then I'm thinking, okay, 
because you wonder why you have a seatbelt. Okay, let me tell you something. Tur tur turbulence can really jack you up, man. Turbulence, I've seen people freaking hit the ceiling. Okay, so right away, and what happens when they hit the ceiling, you can break it, you can snap your neck. So, um, I've seen freaking flight attendants kind of go up in the air. I've seen coffee actually leave the coffee pot and come back into the coffee pot. Crazy, man. Crazy. Uh, that was a while ago. I think now they, they seal it. I think they have a cover on it now. But uh, I remember seeing that. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And, um, but you can, it's not, they don't do it just so you can protect yourself, but also the uh, the other passengers. Because if you fly in your seat, man, you could do some serious damage. You could hurt somebody. You could snap somebody else's neck. You could run it. You, I mean, anything could happen. So, um, and then also there was another thing that they said they like you to have your seatbelt on. So if the plane crashes, they know where you who's sitting in what seats. And it's like, that's a scary thought right there. You know, that's a real scary thought. But, you know, and then you think about, well, what happens if you switch seats sometimes? Sometimes you switch seats with family or whatever. Now what? Now you kind of... You, you, you screwed everything up now. You know, they're going to be freaking burying the wrong pieces. But <coughs> but anyway, I remember, hey, I'll tell you one funny one. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Okay. So, I remember it was me by myself, right? What was I? Yeah, I was by myself. Angel wasn't with me. I was doing a Susie show. So, when I lived in North Carolina, and I had to travel with Susie, I still do, um... Except she travels with the cover girls a lot now. But when I used to just travel with her, she would meet me. So we're going to Dallas. She would meet me in Dallas and we'll meet each other at the at the airport there, you know. But I remember one time, she was feeling a little tight, man. It was like, and I, I basically had to do yoga to get that seatbelt on. So I took a deep breath and I went. And I swear, I fought with this. It was getting so bad, I started sweating. I, I really felt like sweat coming up from like under my hairline and kind of beating out. I'm like, yo, this is bad, man. Like, that's a fat shit, man. That's a fat guy stuff, man. Finally, man, I'm doing this like yoga. Like I'm taking my stomach. I'm taking a deep breath. I'm trying to put it. I'm kind of like contortionist, man. And finally, I go through it. I'm going through this for a while. Like this is not happening right away. Like I'm doing it over and over. And then finally, I get it on there and I go click. And it clicks, and I go, oh, and the belly drops over the belt. I sit back, okay? As soon as I sit there, right, and I relax, the lady, I'm on an aisle seat, the lady on the opposite aisle, she looks at me, she says, excuse me, sir, would you mind passing me that bag over your head? So she had a bag. She was a little woman too, that was over my, that the, on the on the overhead bin over my head, and I was like, oh my god. And of course, I undid my seatbelt, <laughs> went up, grabbed her bag, gave her her bag, and I just sat there. But I was able to get back on. It took me a little bit of a struggle again to get it back on, but I got it back on. You know. But um, Angel told me today, she said, man, you're getting too comfortable with that whole, like, she goes, you not, you don't even get embarrassed anymore. I'm like, no, nah, I still get embarrassed, but I try not to make it into a big deal, you know? Like, before it was like, I don't ring the bell. Like, before it's like, you ring, whenever anybody rings the bell for the flight attendant to come over, you kind of want to know what are, what is it they want. They want a drink. They, they, need, they need some water. Do you have a Band-Aid? You have a vomit bag, whatever. So you, you know you get a little curious. You ring, they ring the bell. You see it light up. It stays lit until the flight attendant comes over. They turn it off and then they ask that person, "How can I help you?" Okay. So I did that before. I rung the bell. They come over. How you doing, sir? Turn off the thing. Everybody's watching. How can I help you? I was like, looking around. Extension. An extension? Yeah, yeah. One second. I'm like, oh my god. So they go and. They do the whole thing where they rap and they pass it to you like it's freaking, they give you a bag of weed or something. Um, but I've gotten to a point now, I kind of wait until I see them pass by, because they're going to pass by. And then when they pass by, okay, I told you I have like, now I got like a hand sign that I do. 
you know, and I kind of like point down and give them this little hand sign, and they're like, oh, okay, and they'll go and get it. <coughs> I don't know if it's the hand sign that's kind of giving them the idea of what I need, or they just looking at me and say, oh, this fat dude don't fit in the seat. Let's get him a, well, he needs an extension. So, but uh, I kind of think, man, they, they need to, man, first of all, first of all, why can't they just make them damn things a few more inches bigger? Like, what the hell? For real. If I could sit in the seat, if I could fit in the seat, then it shouldn't matter how big that damn seatbelt is. Do it like the, the airplane, like in the car. My Jeep, my, I have a Jeep. My, my seatbelt fits perfect. Why can't we all have them like that? Why can't they do them like that? I don't mind putting one across my chest either, but I don't think that matters. Now, if your plane is going down, it's not like you're going out the window or anything. But, um, but yeah, man, it's like, I don't understand. I swear. So, the going there, going to Fresno, the seats, man, really seemed narrow. That was weird. They were tall. They were long. But they were narrow. And now, you know, they put three seats on both sides. And these are 737s. These planes are not that big, you know. And, and you can tell because you're walking through the aisle. And, like, the aisle is basically just wide enough for your bag to roll. So, you know how, how wide a roller uh, luggage, the rolling suitcase, that's that's how wide the the aisles are to go down. And then if you're sitting in the back, you're in you know, row 25 or whatever, and you're rolling through there, you know. I'm, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm, you know, I'm going through there. I'm, and the thing is, when I'm going, I'm trying to be cool about it. You know what I'm saying? But it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of hard, man, because people see me coming and they're like, they start moving in, <laughs> you know, like they don't want me to to bump into them. But I'm kind of smooth, though. Yeah, Angel even said that. Like, I can tiptoe around the house, man, and surprise you. You won't know I'm there. But <clears throat> I tell you, it's my ninja. It's my ninja skills, you know, fat, fat ninja. But anyway, so I just thought that was interesting. I don't know if you guys have any similar issues. It's embarrassing, but I need to get back to the gym. I should I should not be going through this at all. I grew up, I was a skinny kid, man. Skinny kid with big teeth and big ears, man. A big ass afro, too. I was a funny looking kid, man. Skinny as hell. I didn't hit 180 pounds when I came out of prison, man. My last bit. That was it. Now, psst, come on. Crazy. Anyway, guys, that's about it. Just wanted to uh, reach out and tell you guys, uh, thanks for chilling with me. Um, yesterday, I talked a little bit about what you know what we went through. It was a good show, though. I'll tell you that, man. We had a great time. We always do. We love doing those, those shows. Those shows are great. I love seeing the artists there. They're all a big shout out to, uh, who did I see this week? I saw Stevie. Stevie B, I saw Lisa Lisa, I saw Trinia, I saw Johnny O, I saw Cynthia, I saw Lania, I did not see Stacey Q, I heard her, but I didn't see her, she's always very nice too, so usually when she sees me, she'll come up and we'll say what's up, and she's very cool, but I didn't get to see her, and that's usually how it is, a lot of times, if the acts go on real early, you don't get to see them, Stacey Q goes on, like she, I think she might even be the opening act, so she goes on real early, and we go on towards the end, so a lot of times she's gone by the time we get there. But when we were getting there, she was um she was already performing. So I don't know what she did afterwards. If but we all have a, a separate dressing rooms, and hers could have been on the other side of the venue. I don't know. So she could have gotten off the stage, went right to her dressing room, and then dipped from there. So of course I never saw her. So but anyway, but other than that, it was cool. We had a good time. Everything 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 went well. You know. Uh, I think a couple people will complain about the sound, but sound is sound, man. Sometimes you're gonna have it good. It could be, it could be anything. I don't really sweat it, as long as it plays and it sounds decent. Um, I don't really, I don't worry too much about it. Those, are, those are things you can't really do much about it. So to go there and start getting stressed out over it, if you can't fix it, because a lot of times we'll fix it. It sounds perfect in soundtrack, but then when you get to the gig, it changes up for whatever reason. Somebody did something, they moved something, they put added a new unit. Something's different. They turned the knob that shouldn't have been turned. You don't have the time to sit there and try to figure it out. Now, if it's your concert, if you're the key, the key artist, then a lot of times they will calibrate 
the board for you. So that that board would basically be automated so that way when they press a button, it was connected, it was set itself up. I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, automated mixing board. They can press a button and it memorizes where all the levels and the knobs were and you'll see everything turn. It's kind of cool. Um, but you can't do that. Well, then again, I think you can do it for multiple artists. I don't know how many, but they really don't do that with us. They kind of just do that with uh, anybody who's using a band. But we use track acts, so I don't blame them. I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't deal with it either. Makes no sense. With a track act, we're just really dealing with like three channels. So we have a, a audio left and right, and then we have the mic channel. That's it. And if you have a multiple, like cover girls, so we have three mic channels. Angel's channels usually put up higher backgrounds are usually a little lower mixed one with the music just so it sounds good but uh all right guys that's pretty much it and until tomorrow good night freestyle before i lay me down to sleep i pray to hear a freestyle beat for if i die before i wake i hope to make it to the break